Okay, so take two of the third journal entry. And we're going to go way back to July 14th, which as of right now, it is still in chronological order, but I might end up hopping back to random days that I find interesting or like there was something important that happened during the days because it was like May 30th, July 1st, now on July 14th. So it's like sort of chronological. Anyways, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So bear with me. Um, 78 days, no cigarettes, 44 days, no drinking, 35 days without smoking weed, 14 days without vaping, 14 days working out, 14 out of 14 working out, so that's pretty good, um, 11 out of 14 days flossing, 9 out of 14 days doing some sort of meditation during the day, 6 out of 14 days doing core exercises, 10 out of 14, cold shock therapy, 9 out of 14, um, yeah, I think it's no fap. No fap is, you know, yanking it out. Five on one. And then six out of 14, um, sodium loading. So, so you sodium load. Uh, in preparation of a competition, I load up on sodium. So, like, if you have more sodium in your body, your body gets better at retaining the moisture or the hydration. Not moisture, hydration. Because um, it sort of loads up your sodium channels. I don't know. I don't really, I'm not really a doctor, but I know that it's really good to do that before a game because I was told to do that. Anyways, doesn't matter. We'll get into that later. Um, health for the day, mental and physical are still together. So seven out of 10. And then we go career productivity, six out of 10. Yeah. Social friendships and relationships, eight out of 10. Happiness, eight out of 10 for the day. Day 7,837 out of 14,600. Up at 6 a.m. at the galley, grabbing breakfast, 6.15 to 6.45 a.m. Um, yeah, on ship for 7 a.m. I'm a marine technician, by the way, so I fix ships, sort of. I do my part to fix ships. It's a big ship, so I don't really fix them myself. Like, I'm part of a crew that fixes the ships. Anyways, uh, first thing, Molly Cardboard Run, 7.15. So I was Molly, so I was taking care of the dishes, actually. So I was like, there's jobs that you can get on ship. Like, sometimes you're, like, part of the marine technician department. And then sometimes they'll like kick me out to like do the dishes because like we'll rotate through all the departments on the ship will like rotate through who's got to take care of the dishes. So uh, I was washing dishes this time. Anyways, uh, stocked up the kitchen, help with mill, another wood. Moving big brown box from the port breezeway. Uh, Destoring the chicken and meat from the freezer till 9.10. At a nap until 10 a.m. on ship, which is fantastic. Uh, work out until 11.15, uh, prepping the salad bar for everybody uh, from 11.30 till noon, uh, had lunch and I was chilling till 12.50, wrapping up, disposing dry gash, wet gash, so it's garbage, and compost, um, from 1 to 1.45, and I was done for the day, so it was Friday, it was kind of nice, um, back at about 2. Um, sitting down, watching, scrolling through Instagram reels for a bit. Um, relaxing with my, with my roommate, uh, just chilling, catching up until 4.15 or so. And then I was at the Salvation Army until 4, oh, at 4.50. Uh, and I was there till 6.45, so just volunteering, washing dishes, helping serve food, helping clean up the tables, the chairs, stuff like that. Um, there we go. And I was back here for about 9.30. I don't know why it took so long to get back. Whatever. Uh, to link up with uh, Hings, Pachida, Niagara JT, Tata, McGrath, Gardner, Smith, Jacob Somerville, Big Fella. I forget who Big Fella is. Oh, I think that's um, Dobner. We call him Dobby, like from Harry Potter. Anyways. Uh, laddie, and then... I was le I left to go bowl with uh, Charles Harrington, Vanessa, John, from eight to nine fifteen. So we were bowling. It's the first time I've ever bowled, and I was not that good at it. Not really natural. Uh, I drove Vanessa's car back because they had a couple drinks. Um, mucked some chow. Had some so had some supper before driving. Before I was DD again, I drove Niagara, JT, Pachada, and Dava to Capital Barn, which was the place that we were going to get hammered. Um, Niggers car at the Capitol Ballroom for a Mexican party. I was sober the whole night because I'm, it's part of my monkhood. I call it a monkhood, but it's like, 
I'm just not drinking, not smoking, not uh, not doing dirties. Um, anyway, so we're with Charles Harrington, Vanessa Valentina. So these are all the people that were at the party with us. Um, it was Charles Harrington, Vanessa Valentina, Smith, JT, um, Dominer, Dobby, Somerville, Somerville's girlfriend, Jacob, Niagara, Pachita, Byrne, Dava, Laddie, Hanks, John, and that was for Niagara's birthday. Oh, uh, Smith, Jacob, Somerville, Somerville. Oh, wait, I think I already said that. Oh, yeah, sorry. And then Smith, Jacob, Somerville, Somerville's girlfriend, and the big fella left at midnight. Um, Charles Harrington, Vanessa, Valentina left at about 12.30. JT, John, Laddie, Byrne left at about 1 a.m. And then I left last because I wanted to make sure everyone got home safe. And I left with, uh, with Bichardo, my roommate, Hanks, Dava, and Niagara till, uh, at uh, about 2.15 a.m. Um, we had a kilometer and a half walk back to Niagara's car, and then they uh, they stopped because there's a couple people that were like, hey, you want some cocaine? And they're like, yeah, sure, why not? We're absolutely wasted anyways, so why not? Um, and we're just being absolutely obnoxious walking down downtown streets in the middle of the night. So McDonald's lineups, insane. Never seen anything like that. Go somewhere, go to a McDonald's that's not in the middle of the city. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, delayed because of cocaine from 2.35 to about 2.50 a.m. We were at McDonald's from 3 to 3.15 a.m., I was back in bed for about 3.30. I was asleep for about 3.45. Anyways, um, two roses for the day. I'm happy everyone arrived home safe and sound. Everyone had rides, everyone had a TD, and I was happy to sort of be the last one. I would make sure, make sure that I saw the back of everyone and I know everybody left with somebody that was accompanying them or with them. Um, I'm lucky to still have loved every second of the club. So even though I was sober, it was the first time. Anyways, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, I'm bothered, uh, one thorn, I'm bothered by not smiling enough at the club. It's hard to smile, sometimes. One bud, I'm looking forward to manifesting into millions. Take from that what you will, please. One memory, first time I went to the club, I went home with a gal. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Pfft, not any time recently. Don't care to, honestly. Anyways, and then, yeah, after I did my time audit, in the end of June, I started tracking, I sort of broke down my time into seven different, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, seven different activities uh, or ways to spend your time. Uh, fitness, socializing, productivity, working, sleeping, resting and recovery, and learning. Um, and we got sort of tallied out of 24 hours. So I got fitness two hours, uh, socializing five hours, productivity two hours, working seven hours, sleeping six hours, rest and recovery two hours, and learning Zero. Anyways, um, what I was saying before, I'm lucky to have still loved every second of the club. <clears throat> That's the one done. So, on that day, July 14th, 2023, it's the first time that I've been to the club since I started my little, what I call a monkhood. People call whatever you want to. Uh, I basically just, like, I drank a lot and I smoked a lot and I vaped a lot before and then June 1st I stopped the drinking and smoking weed and then July 1st I stopped vaping um, and then I'd been very clean I've been doing my own thing reading sort of diving into my own mind and just finding a lot more reasons to just go insane and uh, just uh, just be weird I guess in my own way and just keep to myself right so um, it's the first time I've been to the club and I wanted to see if I can resist and it was crazy I hope that whoever watches this can experience the feeling of going to a club and like being offered drinks the whole night and smokes like weed weed pens the whole time and vapes the whole time and just uh and just saying no the power of saying no to someone like and not doing it in a rude way right but like very much like i gotta stay true to myself like no one can force you everyone wants to like when you drink when you smoke you feel united in a way right because everyone's sort of going through it together they're all having fun together it's a way of socializing and like i've gone through a drinking phase i've gone through a stoner phase where i smoked a lot of weed and like i st and i've been vaping for like three years or something like that right on and off obviously because everyone tries to quit and then doesn't quit and then it's really addicting and then gets back onto it and then tries to quit and then they say that they're going to quit and they don't quit for about a month and a half or six months and then they're just whatever anyways so it was nice to be able to go to a club and resist the whole night and then the whole time I was thinking, I'm like, every time I say no tonight, it's one no in the bank that can invest into a day longer in my life. 
And that's sort of a weird way that I looked at it, but I'm like, every time that I say no to something that's detrimental to my health, I think it's like, it's almost like a day in the bank for you. It's like an investment into your future, right? Like maybe that's weird. Maybe that's a little bit cliche. I don't really care. Um, but that's the way I look at it, right? And it was like, at the start, it was so hard saying no. And then over time, you start building a little bit more confidence to keep saying it. And not just saying no to people offering, but saying no to your own urges, right? Like, it's so easy to just like flip the switch like that and just be like, oh, okay, well, just one hit won't do. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you hit that once, it's like a, it's like a negative compound effect, right? So you gotta, you gotta run away from that feeling of continuously failing yourself and saying no um, to properly quit, right? Like, but like, you gotta find different ways of doing it, get creative. Anyways, I'm done rambling. Um, that's all I got for you today. Hope you guys learned something. Um, thanks for watching. Hybrid man's out.